In this video, we're going to talk about this RLT gaps window right here that has been built for trading view. And the way that this works is there are four types of gaps. There's two bullish, two bearish, and there are basically, let's see, bullish retest, bullish gap and go, bearish retest gap, and then a bearish gap and go. Yeah. And so what the what this indicator does is you're able to look every day at the market open. Uh, you're able to look right here at this number right here. And when I mouse over any day, you'll see what the gap was. And the gap is measured basically from the close. We'll say, let me see if I find a good example. From the close of the previous day to the open of the current day. And so that will give you a positive or negative number, meaning a gap up or a gap down. In this case, 2.15. Now, that is part of the strategy. You'll notice there are flags, red and green flags, and red and green Xs. And so what happens is your bearish retest gaps are going to look like this. It's red, and it is a RTG retest gap, and it's an X. And I'll explain it in a minute. Your bearish gap and goes would be a red flag, which is a special situation, which is where you close here and you gap below. You're gapping down after a white candle that would be a bearish gap and go here next we have a bullish gap and go which would be right here uh, and then a bullish retest gap right and a bullish retest gap uh, retest gap would be right here a, and you guys can figure out what the green and the red mean right green of course meaning bullish red down here meaning of course bearish now the way that this works is you're like well matt why does it only show these values why does it only show some of them but not all of them well what you can do is you can decide how often how big of a gap you want to see and it will highlight just those so if i said i only want to see gaps of three percent or more then what happens is you update this or maybe you just want to see 3.2 you click okay and so what happens is you'll see here, this was a 6.93% gap. Now, why is it, why is that six point? Because it closed the previous day here and it opened right here, right? Oops, uh, let's try that again. So it closed here and opened here. And so what that means, uh, gapping goes typically gap in a direction and then just run, right? Where a retest gap, so let's look at a, a bullish gap and go in this instance where, yes, the previous day, if we're looking at these two candles right here, try again, these two candles right here, the previous day closed right here at the close of this candle, and then it gapped up. Now, the gap itself measures, again, from the previous day's close to the current day open. It does not say anything about what happened throughout the day. In this case, it just went lower, but typically, well, let's see if we can find a good example where you have a, this is, this is a pretty good one. Let's see. Here is a bearish gap and go. So we closed right here and then we opened lower. Now in this case, of course, Tesla got bought up and it went higher and then it gapped up and then sold off. Now, again, the gap itself measures the previous day's close. So a bullish candle closed here and then gapped up and then sold off. It does not say anything again about what the actual, like what happened during the day, because you're just measuring the open to the, the previous day's close, to the current day's open. So in this case, if uh, like right here, this was not, let's change the setting real quick. Let's go back to 2.0. In this case, if we were to zoom in a little bit, you'll see here 
that on these two candles we evaluate we closed right here at the low or at the the low of the the lower part of the body of the candle we closed here and opened right there right and we did actually go higher now typically what happens with a a, a gap and go is again it typically just uh, it go it it gaps up and then it just typically runs in the direction of the gap. The uh, the exception to that would be uh, sometimes, of course, if it hits a resistance or support level, it may act opposite of what you would expect. But typically, what happens is a let's just talk about a bearish retest gap like these two candles right here. We closed right here and then we gap down and what you'll notice is this upper shadow it meaning it tried to fill the gap in this case it really it was it gapped down kind of right below the low and so in a in a retest gap it typically tries to go higher and then rolls over and goes lower and that's kind of what happened here in this case whereas a gap in a bearish gap and go uh, typically just gaps down and runs. I don't see any really good examples on this screen right here. Uh, same thing with a bullish retest gap. So a bullish retest gap, if you were to look at these two candles, the candle closed right here and it gapped up. And you'll see there's a little bit of a lower shadow. So the price action gapped up, tried to go a little bit lower and then continued higher. Whereas a typically a gap and go look something just like this where there's and with these you just have to be careful of the retest most gap and goes typically tend to run with the exception being if it if it gaps up to a resistance level it's going to probably sell off and if it gaps down to support level it's probably going to get bought up so that is how it works and i'll put a link to this indicator in the description enjoy